guys. Uh, it's me, Amanda. It's a bit of a rainy day and I'm kind of worried that this is going to hit me like it's going to hit me in the middle of a torrential downpour, so I've got my umbrella. Um, anyway, so today I'm going to actually talk about something very integral to my childhood, uh, which was Sid and Marty Croft. Uh, they were two brothers, and uh, they created this like fantasy television world, you know, and with these puppets because um, Sid Croft is like a puppetry master, and this brother was like, we should start like a whole like bunch of like television shows, like with like our our like ideas for like these puppets, and they like had like this like love of like these terrible special effects because this is like the 70s, and I know you're wondering like, hey. How do like you like that kind of stuff when you know like you're only like a senior in high school you know you must have been born uh, in like the 90s 99 to be exact but um you know like how would you know of stuff from the 70s well when i was a kid i actually watched a lot of 70s shows i spent a lot of time watching little house on the prairie stuff like that um and sid and marty croft shows like the, and also the magic garden so i didn't really grow up on like Spongebob and like Cyber Chase. I pretty much grew up on like Sigmund the Sea Monster, the Buckaloos, Land of the Lost, uh, um, goodness, Electra Woman and Dinah Girl, which I'm not going to talk about today, but it's one of like my favorites, Lidsville, H.R. Puffin stuff. So basically I'm just going to talk about some of the different Sid and Ready Croft shows that I used to watch and I'm going to show little clips of them and stuff. So. Uh, first, I guess their first like big thing was in 1969 they created H.R. Puffin stuff, which is like the puppet character. They already had his design from like a while ago, but they decided, hey, we want this to be H.R. Puffin stuff. And he was like this like um, puppet with like, this massive head, you know, like it wasn't like a hand puppet, you know, it was a, a huge puppet with like a massive yellow head and like red hair and like weird like triangles under his eyes. So strange. Um, and basically the show, H.R. and Puffin stuff, followed this boy named Jimmy who like had like this magic flute and he like saw this ship on the shore and like the ship was like, come play with me in like a less ominous tone, but like, you know, like come and play with me. And he was like, okay, I'm gonna go like sail on you to like magical lands. But it was actually a whole trick by this witch named Wilhelmina Witchy Poo, which I think is really funny. Her name was Witchy Poo, but um, <laughs> and so she was, it was all a trick by her to, to lure the boy into a trap. But H.R. Puffin stuff, being the helpful puppet that he is, got his like rescue racer and he like saves Jimmy from the witch and it's basically like H.R. Puffin stuff helping Jimmy, you know, and so I'm gonna show you right now the opening to that because that was like truly monumental in the Sid and Marty Croft like beginnings or beginnings, so here that is. Once upon a summer time, just a dream from yesterday, a boy in this magic golden flute heard a boat from off the bay. Come and play with me, Jimmy, come and play with me, and I will take you on a trip far across the sea. Belonged to a cookie or witch who had in mind the flute to snitch. From her broom broom in the sky, she watched her plans materialize. She waved her wand, the beautiful boat was gone. The skies grew dark, the sea grew rough, and the boat sailed on and on and on and on and on and on. And on. But Puffin Stuff was watching too and knew exactly what to do. He saw the witch's bold attack and as the boy was fighting back, he called his rescue racer crew as often they'd rehearsed and off to save the boy they flew. But who would get there first? But now the boy had washed ashore. Puff arrived to save the day, which made the witch so mad and sore. She shook her fist and screamed away. Totally cool, right? Like, it was like 
like, like all the characters were puppets and like everything in that world was like alive basically the trees were alive like the houses were alive there was like castles were alive you know it was really cool when you saw like witchy poo had like her little bird like character i forget what that was called but i forget like who that was but um that was that was the cool part and the thing was like this plot like it started with this plot trope that become like a sid and marty crop like plot trope of like someone gets lost or like travels somewhere to an unknown place that they had never heard of before, either through like an alternate dimension, alternate reality, just like a different like place they'd never been before. So it's like this unknown person in unknown surroundings. So it was, it was very interesting. It was the first time they ever used this trope and then they would go on to use it in multiple things. You know, the idea of like being trapped there trying to get back home, you know, that was their like recurring uh, trope. So the Bugaloos were their next success, which aired in the following year, 1970. The Bugaloos! So the Bugaloos were four teens in this music group and they all had like insect outfits, they had like antenna and then they had these wings and they could use the wings to fly, I say fly because it was a really bad like special effect where they'd be like, oh we're flying, but they weren't actually flying. Um, and the main antagonist was like this evil like um, what's her name? Benita Bazaar, and she was like, ooh, so like strange. I think she was a comedian from like the 70s, um, the person who played Benita Bazaar, but she was like untalented and ugly, and then the Bugaloos were like these like hip young teens that were like in their own music group, so cool, you know, so cool in like the eyes of kids, you know? Um, and so like she was like, I want to be like them. So it was like the whole thing of like her trying to one up them was like the constant trope. She was just jealous of them because they had the talent to be able to make music. So right now, Bugaloos. The Bugaloos, the Bugaloos, we're in the air and everywhere. Flying high, flying loose, flying free as a summer breeze. Happy as a summer breeze. There's definitely some cool uh, flying going on there. I remember liking like the girl, the girl who like flies against the camera. I think she was my favorite. I can't really remember. The Bugaloos, I don't remember as much. What I do remember though is Lidsville, one of my all-time favorite shows as a kid. It aired in in 1972, uh, and it was it's like basically like a land of hats, and it followed this boy named Mark, and there was like a magician show at like some amusement park or something. I think it's set in, and he like goes backstage after the, everybody leaves, and then he sees like the magic hat, and then just like the magic hat grows, and like I used to think it was the coolest thing as a kid, but now like it's like I can see like how like terrible the effects of it growing were because it wasn't like actually it was so bad it, the special effects were so bad um especially he like jumps in the hat right like he like tries to look in the hat and then he falls in he's transported to an alternate dimension he's like falling but there's like it's oh my god it's such a mess um and basically uh the villain who was named hoodoo i know they all have strange names this public land he flies around in like this magic top hat but it's like a spaceship and it has controls and he has like henchmen and basically the premise is that every person in lidsville is a hat besides hoodoo uh there's a magic genie um called weenie the genie and there's of course mark in the middle of the summer in the middle of a park there began a great adventure for a boy whose name was Mark. He had come to see the magic man along with all the children, and twas so began the day that Mark was never to forget. He performed all sorts of miracles, and Mark was so impressed that when the time arrived to go, he lagged behind the rest. Then quietly he did return the secret of the hat to learn, but everyone had gone away, and darkness held a threat. The moment that he touched the hat, the room began to glow. And as he put it down and ran, the hat began to grow and 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 grow. He was stunned and he was fascinated. Still, he had to see there was something deep inside the hat. What could that something be? Then cautiously, each step he took, he climbed upon the brim to look. And all at once, the hat began to shake. Look out! <laughs> 
<laughs> so basically the point is that like Hoodoo has control over all these hats because he can like zap them with electricity. Um, I kind of forgot how that works but like he like zaps them or something and so like they can't leave. Same thing with like Weenie the Genie. I remember her being my favorite um, because it seemed like she was trapped. She had no way to get out of her situation. She was just kind of like stuck there like being a slave to Hoodoo forever and she was like I just want to go with you Mark. I want to help you go home because she was a genie and she had magic powers. She was supposed to help Mark but this like fear, this like trauma that she had from like being like on like like a slave basically under Hoodoo was that like she like could not perform magic. She would always mess it up and she'd be so sorry about it because she had basically lost her like genie powers. Like, she hadn't lost them. She still did magic but she would mess it up. She would make so many blood because she was so fearful all the time. I remember rel uh, relating a lot to Weenie the Genie. I have a task for you, oh Weenie the Genie! No. Oh. You summon me, oh great charlatan, oh, oh wise and magnificent despot, uh. oh tyrannical and exalted Maharaj of magic, oh... Oh, shut up and stop drooling on my spat. I've got a task for you to do. A task? Uh -huh. Speak! What kind of wondrous task does my master ask of his weenie genie? Well, when you finish your gym class, you can take the prisoner down to the cellar! What? Now, just a darn minute, master. What kind of a rotten job is that to ask a genuine genie? A genuine genie, huh? I'll tell you what kind of genie you are. You're a rotten genie. And a rotten job is good enough for a rotten genie. Now jump, or I'll turn you into a teensy fly with only one teensy! I'm jumping! I'm jumping! <laughs> No need to get excited, oh great quack of quacks Your humble servant gives you service with a smile. Take him below! Come on, you! Move! No! No! Get in there, you spy, and the sooner you confess, the better off you'll be. Why would anybody believe me? I'm not a spy. I'm just lost. I just want to get home. Oh, come on, kid. Things ain't all that bad. If I hadn't stayed looking at that stupid magician's hat, I wouldn't have fallen to this awful place. I'd be in the real world up there. What real world? Up there. Where I come from, where my mother is, and my house, and all my friends. You mean there really is such a place? Away from Litzville? Yes. Could you help me get there? Huh, please? Well, I'd like to, kid. <clears throat> really, I would. Anything would be better than working for that miserable tyrant hoodoo. You see how he treats me, don't you? May a thousand elephants breathe on his glasses. <laughs> well, then what's stopping you from leaving? You're a genie, aren't you? Genies can do anything. Not this genie. Hoodoo's got me so shook up. I can't do anything right anymore. So, next, running from 1973 to 1975, was Sigmund and the Sea Monsters. Oh my god, so cute. Focused on two brothers, and they liked to play at the beach, and one day, they found Sigmund, the Sea Monster, who had been outcast from his family because he refused to scare humans. So the family was like, if you're not gonna scare humans, then you have to leave. And so he, like, tries to scare the brothers on the beach, and he's like, boo! But the brothers just think he's cute, cute. Here, take a look. Sigmund, you are a rotten sea monster. Sigmund, you're through. Scram! Get out of here. There's nothing like a day out on the beach when all it does is rain. You need somebody else to make the sun come out again. When you find that special someone you never expected to, it'll make you believe in magic. It could change your life for you. 
episodes usually had like a plot structure that involved Sigmund doing something that would like that was like bad or like weird or it would cause him basically to be discovered that he was living in the boys house because the boys took him home with them um and so they didn't want Sigmund's family to find out that he was living with humans because now he, that wasn't like that's not allowed you know the sea monsters can't live with the humans so it was like this whole thing of like the brothers trying to keep him hidden and Sigmund like doing like crazy things and like not following the rules and like getting loose and like um, just like causing trouble and almost getting discovered um, honestly super cute super cute show so funny and Sigmund is like one of the cutest costumes like I, I just oh my god I I want a Sigmund costume like save the best for last Marshall Will and Holly on a routine expedition met the greatest earthquake ever known High on the rapids, they struck their tiny raft and plunged them down a thousand feet below to the land of the lost. Time and it's like an earlier history of the earth where there's dinosaurs it's a completely different dimension which I was like why did they do that you know I remember my personal favorite dinosaur was Holly's like pet dinosaur or like friend uh, Dopey who was a stegosaurus if I remember correctly no it was not. he was um is a brontosaurus? I forget. It was a very strange show because it had like these dinosaurs and like this like trying to survive, like adventure aspect, but then it was also very science fiction. Um, it wasn't my favorite. I know that might anger a lot of Cinematic Croft fans out there because Land of Lost is probably like their biggest production since H.R. Puff and stuff. Um, but it's arguably the most successful or at least the most like largest scale concept that they ever came up with. But I just, it was just not one of my personal favorite shows. I think my favorite was definitely Lidsville. Lidsville really got to me. I really like the opening and I just really like, um, I really like Weenie. I, I, I really related to Weenie a lot. If you have a favorite Sid and Marty Croft show that you used to watch as a kid, uh, please leave it in the comments down below. And if there's something that I missed that you used to watch, like Electra Woman and Dyna Girl or something similar or something else, I know Sid and Marty Croft did so many shows, you can leave that in the comments as well. Tell me to check it out. Um, if you've never heard of any of these, then where have you been? Look up some like YouTube videos because I know so I, 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 some of the clips and stuff are on YouTube and you can find some of the old episodes there. Um, but I hope you guys like this little bit of like insight into like, you know, like what I was like as a kid or like what I built my like values off of. It was a lot of like scary like puppets and like, <laughs> and like weird science fiction like portals and people getting lost and maybe that has something to do with me and like flights of fancy and like my tendency to daydream about other worlds was maybe because I grew up so much on like weird psychedelic 70s shows that may or may not have been like like influenced by LSD so um, thank you so much for watching guys and I will see you very very soon if you haven't noticed what I'm trying to do is post three times a week so this is gonna be my first video for this week I think the next video that I make is going to be a typewriter video very exciting I know um, and I'm not sure what the last one's gonna be but it might be something related to either college or another like discussion type video with a topic um, but thanks, thanks again, guys, for all the support because I see that I've gotten a couple likes and a lot of views. So I really do appreciate that. Okay. Until tomorrow. Can you tell I'm trying out different outros? Okay. <laughs> Bye.